Hi there, another video for the evening. I'm planning on being a little bit prolific. This is my new everyday carry tool storage system. I want to order one of these strong boxes. I want something that I could keep on my dresser that looks cool, that has all of my particularly knife and multi tool carry options in it. Not flashlights, I don't want them all banging around together. But this is a very solid steel powder coated box from the best made company, like them or hate them, their stuff is high quality. They have a very pretentious website, I'll give you that. Their design is a sort of very clean and Apple-like. And uh, that does switch a few people off. I've heard them being branded metrosexual and um, hipster and all that sort of thing. And maybe they are, but you can't get around the fact that their stuff, while slightly pricey, is well-sourced and high quality. But I digress. This is the strong box. It's the 9-inch strong box, 9 inches across and um, I'm using it for my everyday carry storage. That's about all there is to say about this. It's a box with a high quality hinge and a flick up latch that I now keep all of my knives and multi-tools. Because this video has only gone for a couple minutes now, I thought it would be fun for me to do the big box of tools and take everything out and show you what I have. Let's go. Let's start with the Gerber Crucial. That's right, I forgot I had you. Well, I forgot until I when I opened this box to prepare for this video moments before. I thought, oh shit, that's right, the Gerber Crucial. I never use that thing, and I don't. It just doesn't really have a place. What it does is a is act as a everyday carry type, most basic tools, pocketable MT. And that is a cool idea. It is just a shame that it has done so much better in the Leatherman Skeletal. But it is a, still a cool tool. If you don't have the $90 to spend on the Leatherman Skeletal, what you do get with the Gerber is a good quality sheep's foot knife. You get a... where are we? It's been a while, been a while. You get a Phillips driver that is rather stumpy. You get a flat driver that's also rather stumpy, but that's fine. That's about the same as the skeletal and heck, even the waves type drivers. You get a rescue hook, which is very sharp for cutting seat belts and things. And you get a pair of pliers, which is a little bit stiff to open, fairly ergonomic. Very ergonomic, but it's very, very light duty. I would give it about a 6 out of 10. The Leatherman Super Tool. Very heavy duty type toolbox, industrial multi tool. One of the better large multi tools you can get. Still the best pliers out of all of them. Tool set is good. Uh, recently bested by the Swiss Tool in tool variety, however. Um, everything but scissors really, all the essentials but scissors, which is fine for what I think is uh, a larger, more beefy, more toolbox replacement style multi-tool. Give this a 7.5 out of 10. Ah, the Gerber MP400. Classic little light duty, light use multi-tool. Good to keep in your pocket if you're going to go around a friend's house helping bloody put a trampoline together or something like that. It's got the Fast pliers, which everyone loves, well, which I love. Very comfortable to use. You can bear down them, feels good. Tools are all on the inside. It's definitely, it definitely doesn't feel like an expensive high-end multi-tool, but it has cheap utility. Has a good pair of scissors. The knife's a bit weird, but it's, um, yeah, it's passable. The knife has the, um, my particular one has its uh, nail nick on the wrong side. So when you close, when you close the knife, the nail nick, oh, where are my camera? The nail nick is, uh, obscured by the other tools, but that's fine. There's plenty of plenty to grip onto. Has a full size uh, 3D Phillips driver as well, which I think is good for any multi tool to have. It's a good one. Give it a give it a seven out of ten. I like it. I know it's not it's not it's nowhere near a Leatherman Wave or anything like that, but I like it more because it's peculiar and it, I just enjoy using it. Leatherman Rebar, a bit of deja vu. Seeing I just went through my multi tools, probably the order I put them back. Has affected this. Has that excellent ply head. They should put this ply head on the wave. That would probably kick the wave up into my top five if that had this ply head actually to make it feel more like a, a tool than a than a giant everyday carry knife with um, 
some uh, small accessories on it. Uh, same tool set as the Super Tool 300, which is more forgivable. Um, it's lack of scissors and uh, a couple of other things on a very small six and a bit ounce tool in the uh, four inch range. Still very pocketable, round edges, very comfortable, fairly thin, very good. Skeletal, brilliant tool, really does replace a knife and a multi-tool. You could uh, keep, keep this in a, in a squirt in your pocket or this even in a Victorinox Classic and you are covered for all of your needs, unless you really need a file every day, which you probably don't. Um, this has screwdrivers covered, has knife covered, has pliers covered, has a carabiner slash bottle opener covered. This covers a lot in a very light and very high quality package. I'd give this a 9 out of 10. Fantastic. The Gerber MP600. Bit of a big strange one. Its main competition is intended to be, I think, the Super Tool, but it's nowhere even close. When you compare it to the rebar, um, yeah, it probably stands up in a few ways. The pliers probably stand up, given that they've now got the carbide replaceable cutters. Um, the tools are all on the inside. Um, it's got those standalone serrated knife. It's got the file. Um, they're all locking tools. It's got a bit of a weird shaped um, knife. It's not the best for cutting. Um, you just expect a little bit more from quite a lumpy multi-tool. This is definitely a sheath carry. And if you're going to sheath carry a multi-tool, you may as well sheath carry a super tool. Or you may as well save up another month's pay and sheath carry a Swiss tool. Speaking of which, the Swiss tool. Um, I'm just going to put up another review on this. But this pretty much has all the tools that you would want in a multi-tool. Very high quality. Very high price though. Um, oh, sorry. I'd give this a 5 out of 10. None of these tools are going to be 0 out of 10 because they're all, they're all fairly utility and um, none of them are terrible. Uh, this here, uh, you know, I'm going to have to say this is a 9 out of 10, just like the, um, the Victorian, uh, the Leatherman Skeletal. Nothing is perfect, and I'll tell you why in my review. This is a SOG pocket power plier. Uh, this is the nicest pair of pliers you'll ever use. So smooth, and you can flick them shut, and flick them open, it's fantastic. Really fun to play with. Really good amount of pressure you can put on things as well, thanks to those gears there. They're very flash. They really squeeze down on it. Some people complain that this cuts the hand up. I just say, use more tools and get tougher hands, because it doesn't really bother me at all. Um, it's got a weird sort of combo knife. All the tools kind of flop out a bit. Um, but this is a very thin, slim package. Like, if you look at that and compare it to, say, compare it to the rebar even. The rebar's got a bit more, yeah, it's got a fair bit more thickness to it. You can keep this, and I did, you can keep this in your back pocket. It comes with a sheath, but you can slide this into your back pocket next to your wallet and really is a good everyday carrier. Um, it's just the knife isn't so good that it sort of fills the same role as a skeletal, that's all. I give this a 7 out of 10. You can get a version... Um, made branded by a different company, I forget what it is, where the gears are covered and that would make this an 8 because the gears are a bit sharp and um, you'll, just, you'll find them um, poking into your bit. What have we got? Ah, oh, this is something different. We've got a Victorinox Explorer. Knife based little multi-tool. Cool things about the Explorer are full sized Phillips. That is a nice positive lock up on, it, on its uh, spring, on its slip drive of course, but nice positive lock up on that. Very standard tool set, but it has the full size Victorinox scissors, which is cool. And has the magnifying glass, which actually has a fair bit of utility. I'm often looking at serial numbers of things in my job, and this helps a lot, especially when they're all rusted off, covered in engine oil. Um, yeah, really, really good little tool. Getting on the thick side of Swiss Army knives, I probably prefer to stop at three layers, such as, what else? I'm sure it's in there somewhere. I think I've got a hiker in there. I prefer to put three layers, keep them pocketable. This feels like you're carrying a big, big pair of, big box of like, um, box. Big thing of nail polish or something in your pocket, you know? When you, you know when you get out with your wife and she gets you to hold like her nail polish or a giant mascara. It feels a bit like you've got that in your pocket. Uh, a little bit too big to be comfortable, I think. Uh, for what it is, I mean, if you're going to carry something big and uncomfortable in your pocket, or less comfortable, you may as well carry a Reba. But a very good Swiss Army knife. And it's cool for like a little kit or something. I keep this in a little kit on my cargo pants pocket at work whenever I need to look at said serial numbers or um, whatnot. Now the other tools are, it's got the little little blade rather than the file, corkscrew, toothpick, tweezers, 
and the standard opener layer of um, candid bottle opener. I'll give that an 8 out of 10 though. A very good Swiss Army knife. One of the better ones. We've got a Leatherman Juice CS4. I have a love-hate relationship with this. I loved it when I first got it, but then when I used it, the more I used it, I found that certain issues on it annoyed me. Um, I don't like, I just do without this whole wine opening system. I don't think anyone really uses that for the wine. Well, I don't. I shouldn't say anyone because there'll be some guy who says, hey, I love the wine opening system. That is my favorite thing. I would buy just that. I'd buy Leatherman Juice CO, which is nothing but a corkscrew and an opener. But yeah, it just doesn't quite seem like, it just seems like, I, I mean, what I should have done was got the S2 because the scissors are great and the knife is cool and the pliers are fine, but then you get these extra layers which makes it less pocketable and you get this stupid awl that isn't sharp and doesn't work. You get a saw which is on a slip joint for one that you don't really need on a multi-tool, I don't think. It's a bit thinner than the Victorinox or a bit more of a weird shape than the Victorinox ones as well. And these tools inside, the pliers are fine um, for light duty pliers, so about on par with what you expect from the skeletal. These tools inside, these flathead drivers are just bastards to get out. They hack you, hack this part of your finger up, terrible. So there's a few flaws in the Juice CS4. I think they might have fixed them with the new Juice, but then they've created a couple of other problems by making it uglier and making the knife shorter, so I don't know. I'd give this a 5 out of 10. Steel knife. Ah, uh, bless him. My little cousin got me this for Christmas. And he was thinking, he had his thinking cap on. He th actually thought about what I liked rather than getting me like a, I don't know, like a aftershave or something like that. He thought, you know, what, is, what does Pete like? He likes knives and he likes pocket things. So he got me this very sturdy, um, still branded knife. So still is in the chainsaws. Um, it's fine. It's um, obviously Chinese made, very similar to what Smith & Wesson do get a Chinese company to make a knife for them and then they put their brands on it. But it's got a cool, it's like a steel or aluminium type handle. It's got a bit of g 10 type stuff there for grip, sort of rough textured stuff. It's just got a one-way pocket clip. Uh, it's got a back lock, which is my favorite type of pocket knife lock. And it's um, yeah, got a bit of a large size of three and a half inch blade. Just a good beater knife. I'd take this out and I'd, I'd stick it in the dirt and the mud and use it on Getting picking stuff out of my chainsaw or, or scraping the the wax, the wax and the um and the sap from my from my axe after I've used it. So in good quality, like for what it is, for probably a thirty dollar knife or or so, and it just means a bit because it was nice that someone thought of thought of what they were getting me for Christmas. We don't we sort of just get we all draw our names out of a hat. There's about eight of us that play, and it's the Chris Kringle game. And you know, often you just get like a, a body wash or you know like a Lynx pack or. You know, something like that, and it's nice. It's thought of me. It got me a steel T-shirt as well, and also a little uh, kid's chainsaw, which is probably really probably my favourite part of the of the experience. This is a Victorian white classic. I've got a bunch of these classics. I've got a green one, a white one. On my keys right now, I've got a, a one with the light in it, the signature light. Victorian classic is indispensable. So light. Has three very cool tools. Really good present for girls as well. Um, my wife carried this one for a while. She's just upgraded to the Leatherman Micro. How cool is that? But um, yeah, I think this is quite cool. Very, very light. There's no harm having this on your keys. The white is good because it doesn't show scuff as well, which is which is what you want. The red one, the red shiny solid oil really just goes to crap when you've had it in your keys. But I think white always has a certain coolness about it. There you go. Toothpick and tweezers as well. Very, very good. Ah, Falk Neven U4, one of my newer knife acquisitions. Very sharp, scary sharp even. Wow. Convex ground, VG10 type steel, but not VG10, super gold. It's still another like another laminated steel. Um, little Zytel handle, with a sort of a good ultralight knife, or for taking a knife to somewhere where you're not supposed to really pull out your big ass, um, your big ass steel. So when you want to scrape off something, you don't want to bring out your big steel, but you want to you still want to do a bit of cutting. You you get your fork knife and U4. That's right, U4. Little little Zytel handle, very light and keeps the knife's weight down. And one thing I was a bit bummed about, I put it in my pocket with my keys. And look, 
A bit of scuffing on there already. That was a bit of a bummer. As I tell, I thought it'd be a bit harder than that, so that was kind of upset me just a little bit. But seeing as my hand is usually over that part of the scuffed, it doesn't really matter. Maybe I'll get like some sandpaper and scuff it up and make it look like I've made grip on it. This is a seven dollar knife. You pay a lot for that steel. Um, that's what you're paying for. It's sort of a one of those super steels. Um, not the highest performing steel. I think it's probably not quite up with the S90 and the these ultra harder. This is still a hard steel at 62 on the Rockwell hardness scale, but it doesn't stand up as much as the. Um, I think there's a good, really good test done by a Blunt Truth for you, where it sort of. I think it cakes out a little bit. I think it does about twice as much as Oz8, but then S35 VN does about another four times as much or something. So, yeah. Bit of a posh deal. Again, a lockback knife, which is what I'll always choose. I don't know why. I think it's just safer. I'm not a fast action knife guy. Lockbacks are better in Australia as well because they don't shit open and uh, more likely to get into the country. This is a Squirt PS4. Brilliant light duty set of pliers. Very pocketable. You know what, I have this little system where I keep this and either this or the Gerber LST and a little Prion 1 in my pocket and that is like your whole EDC in your coin pocket and it all fits in there and it's cool. I think I've done a video on it actually, I think my Gerber LST review, I'll do a little, little video on that. This is a value of little tools, this is like a real Swiss Army knife uh, quality and calibre of tools, it's got a lot more in it than you would expect. Um, it's competition is the Gerber Dime, which I do own, but is currently in my work vest. Um, just sort of hanging there, don't really use it that much. These ones, you learn that you'll use them if you carry them every day, but you kind of, they're not essential, they're not essential to have. Um, they just make, make the little tiny things easier. Great for picking up stuff that you don't want to touch. You just use this little pair of, ew, that's, what's that gross, you know, gross needle on the ground? I'll, I'll pick that up, I think. Oh, what's that yucky, like, what's this? Oh. Oh, look at that. I pick that up with a good, good little tool set. It's got a file on it, which I think is a bit silly when you have these tiny files. And, but it's, it's a good little utility bag. Ah, ratings. Sorry, I've completely caved on the ratings. That is a, that's a 9 out of 10. That is an indispensable bit of kit. This, this so far is a 7.5. It's okay. This is a 6. 7 for sentimental reasons. And this, this is a 7.5 out of 10. Very good tool. And this, this isn't a knife or a multi-tool. This is the Best Made Match Safe. Well, it's not made by Best Made. It's made by K&M Match Safes, a bit of a cottage mum and pop type industry, which, again, I know I harp on about them, but the Best Made company supports cottage industry in America. And you're all going on about how there's no jobs and, you know, the industries are dying. Well, it's things like this that get things going again. Your little mum and pop stores making things and... People being ingenious and people being entrepreneurial. And this is encouraged and these are sold across the world by Best Made. And how cool is that? It's got a compass. It's got a very ingenious self-tensioning lanyard system, which sort of helps hold the cap on. And inside, I, of course, am using it to store matches and a striker. If you get strike anywhere matches, you can strike the matches on the knurling on the side. And I give that a 9 out of 10. I think that is awesome. And I love, like, when I'm feeling a bit like accessorizing, when I want to go out and play real hardcore Bushman, I'll strap this around my belt and loop it through, and it makes me feel cool about myself. Yeah. What else we got? Other than Style CS. I'm not the biggest fan of the Style range at all. Um, they just seem a bit cheap or a bit flimsy or just a bit pointless. Um, the Squirt PS4 does everything better, and the Squirt S4 did everything a lot better, and the Micro does everything better as well. It's got more tools, so... Um, just quickly, this one's got a nail file, it's got a knife, it's got a pair of tweezers, scissors, carabiner slash bottle opener, and I go on about this all the time, but Leatherman, put the knife nail nick further along the blade. This doesn't make sense, pulling the knife out like this. When you're opening something that close to the pivot, it hurts your nail. Stop it. Give this a 5 out of 10. This is a Japanese Higo no Kami knife. It's a somewhat of a friction folder. Kind of just secure it open. A little long three and a half inch blade. Still terrifyingly sharp, I see. You know why it's still terrifyingly sharp? Because I never use it. Because this knife is dangerous. 
it's too sharp. The lock is invariably you know, reliant on you concentrating on holding your thumb there. Uh, it's not particularly comfortable. It's a cool piece though. It's a cool art or knife collecting piece. Like it's got some Chinese writing there. It's a bit tacky. I know it's that probably that faux Chinese. Probably still made in like a big factory somewhere in, in sorry, China, J Japan, Japanese. Jeez. Of course they're different. Now, yeah, what was I saying? Yeah, it's probably still just made, mass produced, pretend, they probably pretend like it's forged by some bladesmith, but when you only pay $40 for it, it's probably not. Um, it's good laminated steel though, you can tell the steel is quality by looking at the top, you can see it's got the two sides of high, high uh, chromium steel, and then the um, more high carbon core, which has that terrifyingly sharp edge. You can actually see the light catching on the, the various sort of, I guess they're probably imperfections in the edge, but it's such a fine edge that um, it'll just cut through anything. But, too dangerous. 4 out of 10. This is a Victorinox Hiker. This, I think, is the ideal Swiss Army knife. Ideal Boy Scout knife. Doesn't have scissors. Has a saw. Doesn't have a corkscrew. Has a Phillips. Very, very cool. Wilderness companion for giving to your 8 year old kid as his first knife, I think you could go very much more wrong than giving him a Victorinox hiker. It's got the opener layer, it's got the two knives, a little whittling knife, the main blade, it's got that nice Victorinox steel that, you know what, for your kid, you can kind of, you can not have it super sharp and, I mean, I know they say a safe knife is a, a sharp knife is a safe knife, but pretty sure with kids it's not because a sharp knife is really unforgiving and a, um, and a kid's just going to use it. A kid's just going to use it for little dicking around things. He's not going to be, um, not going to be doing anything. He's probably not even going to be carving wood with it. So he'll just be playing with it more. If anything, if if it's anything I remember, all you use is the saw. You go out and you saw a whole bunch of little things. You make little stick, stick sticks in the ground. You make tent pegs and stuff like that. I never even used the knife. I always wished I could had a reason to, but little kids generally don't have reasons for using knives. We open all the letters for them because we're their parents. Ah, love this little guy. This is the Victorinox Alox Cadet from the Cadet Colors range. Very basic tool set, knife, file, no openers because it's Alox. No key ring, which is a little bit annoying, but what a good dress knife. You know, you're going to a fancy event. We well, used to have taken this until I got the uh, Falcon even, but even still this has its charms and depending on what I was wearing, I may well choose this as my primary blade at a wedding or something. I'll give this a 9 out of 10. I just think it's awesome. Look how thin it is. So cool. Such high level of fit and finish. Really good. Really good knife. Cold steel, mini tough light. Very safe. Great little box cutter. Oz8 steel. Um, really strong axis lock. Like you have to push the lock all the way in for it to unlock. When you try and shut it on your hand, it stops because I don't know if it's intended or not. Really good little box cutter, high utility knife. Um, another good knife to take when you want to be a bit less conspicuous. Great knife, 8 out of 10. Other than Micro, as I said, beats the style of everything. Enduring design, love how it looks. Tweezers suck. But that's fine. Everything else in it works very well. A little eyeglass screwdriver is a boon to have. Actually fits eyeglasses too. It will bend if you force it too much on the tip, so be careful. Um, knife blade is chisel ground. This one is not the best example because the previous person has butchered it. Got this second hand for like five dollars. Very cheap. It's another good thing. Another screwdriver and a nail file, nail cleaner. Good spring loaded scissors. Eight out of ten. Mercator K55K, good old time lockback knife. This one's got a bit rusty because it is C75 high carbon steel. That'll come off with a probably just a sharpen because it's all in the bevel, but that just goes to show what this knife is for. It is a gentleman's carry. Put a little bit of paracord on the back, perhaps to help fish it out. Maybe not even paracord, perhaps like a nice little bead lanyard or something. Very thin knife, would carry well in like a back pocket or something. Uh, it's, it's secure, it's safe, the lock works, just the steel is very rusty, but takes a wicked edge. Um, was one of my sharper knives at one point, but I did main, I did main carry this for 
a month or so, and um, yeah, it did well. Nice long blade, it's good, like really good for food prep. You can sort of get across a whole apple with it, or at least most of the whole orange. So that's good. I take this out with my kids when we go for walks, cut oranges and cut lemons and stuff like that. And yeah, it was good times. Good times. I give it a seven out of ten. Uh, the Leatherman Crater C33. See, with me and pocket knives, I'm the biggest knife collector, um, much more a multi-tool collector kind of guy. Uh, when the knife works for me, I generally stick with it, and I stuck with this for probably a year. Um, a really good knife. Uh, the steel is only 420 HC, but I'm happy with that. I use a lot of Leatherman, so it's about what I expect. I've not been spoiled by Super Steel, so it's happy enough with it. Uh, it's very light, very comfortable to hold knife. Uh, just good, good blade shape as well. Um, comes very sharp, gets very sharp again very easily. It's a liner lock, which isn't my preferred style, which is what ended up steering me towards um, the other two sort of main knives that I use. Uh, it's got this carabiner on the back that I don't use at all. Even for the bottle opener, I just use something else to open my bottles. So it could do without that, but very cheap, like a good cheap knife. Probably one of the better cheap US made knives you can get. Very happy with it. Give that a 8.5 out of 10. Really good knife. That's my Prion P1. It's a torch. You don't belong there. Uh, Square ES4, same as the PS4, but has those jaws for stripping wire. Give it a 7 because those jaws don't have particularly high utility for anyone but electricians, but as with all multi tools, still very collective, uh, collectible and fun. And the last thing, no, second to last thing in my box is the Spyderco Delica 4. Oh. This is a bit of a bucket list knife for me. I don't think I'll ever spend more than $110, which is what I spent on a knife um, after I got this one. Because, as I said, once something works for me, I've got my two basic knife needs covered. Gentleman's, discreet knife, and just other everyday general carry, which is what this is. Um, this is the most comfortable knife I've held. Um, it's one of the lighter ones I've got as well. Comes wickedly sharp. Love the VG10 steel. Like the pocket clip, I may well strip it. Love the blue colour, as you see, I kind of choose blue when, when I can choose something, colour of something. Um, yeah, very happy with it overall. Love the lock back again, as I said. Um, for my first Spyderco, really happy with it, 9.5 out of 10. And the last is the little Gerber LST that had slipped through the cracks. Looks a bit like a little toothpick after seeing it next to a Delica, but a really cool little knife. Um, just uh, very cheap. Very light, ultralight even. That's what it's called, the ultralight LST. Uh, lock back again. Uh, costs about twenty dollars, so that's probably getting towards the pricey side um, for really for what you get. It's a four twenty HC blade. When you look at it next to the Falcon even, you can sort of see they serve a similar purpose. The Falcon even probably weighs uh, probably an extra half ounce on it, but you get a bit more blade. You get a lot better blade steel. Um, this will stay sharp. You sharpen this. You sharpen the uh, LST probably 10 times and to the time you need to sharpen this the first time. But as I said, really good little companion with... <coughs> Excuse me, sneeze. With these three in the coin pocket, does really well. But conversely, probably won't get much use now because it'll be these three in the coin pocket. Probably with the knife folded up because otherwise I would cut my leg and bleed to death. So that is all my things. Not all my things. Uh, some things that were missing from this video were my Leatherman OHT, which is a adequate multi-tool for most people, but a very good one for me at my job. Very good tactical one-handed opening multi-tool. Quite happy with it. Give it a 7.5 out of 10. Very big though. Sort of you don't get the um, you don't get the features for its size. That it really is. Uh, missing a Gerber dime, which is uh, on my vest. Missing a Victorinox Pioneer, which is very similar to a cadet, but this size rather than, where is it, where are you cadet? Hmm. Where did my cadet go? Ah, put it back in this little case. So Pioneer is very similar to the cadet except it has a uh, 91 millimeter length, it's a bit longer, and it has a all instead of a nail file. So missing that one, and missing my wave. My wave is on my friend's belt at work. Because again, like the OHT, it's a very good um, 
Only tool you've got? Very good. Covers everything adequately, but excels at nothing. Jack of all trades, master of none. This has been a long video. Um, I'd recommend getting one of these boxes. They do a couple of different sizes, and then they do a front-loading toolbox as well. Um, I would love to be able to lock this, because I've got little kids. But they won't be little kids for much longer. And um, as it is, it's a very handsome tabletop kit. Thank you very much if you made it through this long video. I do appreciate it. And I do appreciate all of you 155 subscribers that I have now. 55-ish, maybe 153, but thank you very much for watching. See you later.